Yesterday, something unprecedented happened on Roblox. Adopt Me hit 1.5 million active players at a single time in the game. This is completely unheard of on Roblox. It's to the point now with Adopt Me that they should just break it out into its own platform. The reason behind this, I am going to explain in this video how this happened and why Adopt Me is doing so well. Not only did it hit 1.5 million active users, I mean, it's Sunday morning at like 8 a.m and they're at a half million now. It'll probably do it again today. But it also has passed five billion visits this week. That is insane. I'm gonna jump into this game and I'm gonna show you why this is happening. Why this game is so different from any other game out there. Even if you don't play it, and I don't play this game, but I know why this is happening. I'll go in as a, and I'm gonna show you why most of the players in here are always parents, uh, even though I'm in a, some kind of bunny pajama here. So this game has something unique. It's not a Meep City where you build houses. It's not just a simulator where you collect pets, but it is a game that taps into the very human psyche of what makes us unique, different from everything else on this planet. The one trait that humans have that they must need all the time, that they desire, is the trait of nurturing. You see, you just don't collect pets here for a really OP multipliers just so you can buff up your collection of other things. No, you collect pets here so you can take care of them. You have to feed them. You have to nurture them. You have to provide for them shelter, food. And now because of this update yesterday, you have to dress them, which completes the third part of nurturing food, shelter, and clothing. Now you take care of your pet. You grow your pet. You bond with your pet. This is what makes this game so special. We've been doing it for decades. Little kids have collected puppies when they were young. Girls have played with Barbies and combed their hair and dressed them and nurtured them as their own. It is the right of humans to possess and keep and grow. This is why this game does so well. It has tapped into the psyche. See this, see this girl? She's got her little chicken newborn and now she's going to go feed it. The other thing, the other human psyche this game taps into, which you didn't realize, is the human need to be part of a family, to be part of a group. You have to be part of a family. You have to create a family. All humans want this. They have to be part of a family just to justify their existence. Without the uh, nurturing aspect and the family and your growth of your family and the development, you don't feel that your existence is even worth it. And this is what this game taps into. If other games probably took this type of model, they would blow up just as much. No other developer has seemed to figure this out except these guys. They're the only ones that have figured out at a young age, you by human right already have the need to nurture, to be part of a family, and to possess. So I'm going to try and figure out here how to dress my pet. I did have a pet. I don't know where he went. Oh, there he is. Oh, uh, wait. The fox. What does the fox say? <laughs> I have to have a fox, okay? So I'm going to try and dress this pet. And now you can dress your pets. Thank you. Teleport to the hat shop. Uh, yes. Wait, he only gets a hat? What about a, like a, some pants or something? Okay, I'm here. I got my red panda. Where do, where do I go? Where's the hat shop? Is this the hat shop? Or, no, this looks like a boat. Oh, okay. It is a hat shop. Oh, well, he's a fox. And he's Foxy the pirate. So I got to get him a pirate. Okay, pick up one. Hey, no, I didn't want to pick you up. I want to view the hat. Oh, isn't he cute? Oh my God, buy for 750 bucks. Sure. I don't have 750 bucks. Wait a minute, I got to spend Robux on this? It's such a rip. Wait a minute, cancel. 750 bucks. Bro, wait a minute, I, I could have swore I had more money. Oh, you can get him some glasses? Oh, a beanie? That's pretty dope. Okay and a hat uh i really wanted to get my fox a pirate hat because he's foxy the pirate 
Okay, what is this? A dra- Oh, you can get them dragon wings? Okay, $2,000, bro. You're be- Little foxy guy, you're becoming extremely expensive, just like my real kid. Um, you can also get him one of these. He could be a hero. All right. Ooh, oh, that looks cool. A little 3D view. All right, uh, what else we got? All right, sunglasses, beanie. Whoa, what's this? It looks like nothing. Oh, you can get him a backpack. Okay, you can get him a backpack. I wonder if that actually does anything. You can get him a cap, but they need a little clover there. That would be cool. And you can get him some dope shades. All right. So this is how you dress your pet. I don't see how this really benefits any of the pets. I'm not sure if they had actually like some benefit to the pet. I mean, my pet could be, my pet's a baby. Where do I get the diapers from? I need diapers. All right, they have something else over here. So this is the biggest part of this game is that they've learned how to tap into the human psyche for the aspect or for one of our traits as humans is the ability or the need to want to nurture. Uh, darkness is my, okay. Besides the need to nurture, also the need of possession. We all need to possess, especially if you're young. You go to uh, your birthday party and you get all your presents and then some kid wants to start playing with your presents. What's the first thing? Your first reaction. Your first reaction is like, uh, don't play with my toys because I haven't even played with them yet. I haven't possessed them yet. You can't play with my toys until I open them. That is uh, the distinct need of possession. And you see that in young kids even today. You never want to open your toys at the birthday party. You always take them home and you open them by yourself. And then if your friends come over, they play with you. But if you have not gone through the process of possession, it really disturbs you as a human. So uh, parents out there, always take the to toys home. Don't open them up right away. So that is what uh, I believe is bringing the so many people to this game is the young possession and nurturing aspect if you come in here as a boy obviously you're going to be a provider you're going to feel the need to provide if you notice most of the boys in here build houses first before they start nurturing pets and sometimes they even team up with another player a girl and they start a family and the woman ends up being the nurturer and the male ends up being the provider Again, that's just human aspect. I'm not trying to stereotype anything. It's just the way we were wired when we were born. And then this game just kind of further pushes that narrative of a male provider and a female nurturer. But I've noticed there's a lot of guys in here, you progressive, uh, like me, and you're nurturing. Like I got my little fox here. <laughs> Isn't he so cute? Seriously, wait a minute. They got my eyes right. I'm green eyed. <laughs> Uh, I don't wear lipstick though, okay? I don't wear lipstick. I also noticed that people get pets based on their personality. Have you ever noticed that? A lot of the girls have girly type pets or chickens or, well, she's working on the egg. But walk around, just look at people's pets. It really could tell you something about their personality. Even if you've never met them before, or you don't know them. You can tell, as me, I'm a kind of a sneaky, sly fox, right? So I got a fox, but there's also a backstory to the me and the fox. And there's a fox on my avatar, if you've ever looked at it. There's a backstory to that. If you know the backstory of the fox and me, uh, go ahead and put it in the comment section. So what if another game also had this same concept, but they can mold it to their game's narrative? Let me give you an example. Come, wait. Where am I going? Uh, see, it even says in family here. Check it out. The title, in a family. So I'm like a loner here. I'm not in a family for some reason. You'll see a lot of people will urge to become part of a family when they get in this game. And that just proves my point as far as people having to be some part of a group or family. These are why certain groups don't do so well with people not in a family. I won't get into that. That's too much of a dark subject. So I won't get into why people prey on people not in a family for their groups. And I'm talking about in the real world. So what if there was a concept that a game you liked took the same nurturing aspect and family aspect and they put it in their game. And I'm gonna give you an example right now. My favorite game, Dungeon Quest. Let's take the same concept and let's apply it to Dungeon Quest. Follow me along here. Let's add pets to Dungeon Quest. I know you just cringed right now. You just automatically cringe. 
but I'm not talking little cats and dogs and dorky pets like that. I'm talking one pet for male, one pet for female, okay? The pet for male would be a dragon. The pet for female would probably be some kind of mystical unicorn or something like that. It's got to be cool, okay? You just can't have dorky pets in here. The pet then becomes a multiplier only for a legendary that you're holding. So I'm holding a legendary here and I would have a little dragon, but not just a pet. The pet has to evolve. It has to grow. You must nurture it. So it'll start off with a very tiny multiplier and you have to do something. I would say play multiple dungeons or kill multiple bosses. And as your XP goes up, so does your pet. So your pet gets bigger and bigger till one day you have a, like a sick OP pet. He's just like a humongous giant dragon standing next to you. That would be cool because there's a goal now, a nurturing goal. Also the family aspect. Why not clans? There's clans on discord, you know, groups of people to get together and always grind together. Why not clans in this game? You would hit another button kind of like the cosmetic and there'd be like a clan button here and there would be multiple clans posted. Let's say there'd be multiple clans posted like your and you would have a join button and that join would send it to the clan master, the guy who started a clan. He would have to accept you into the clan and then you would be in the clan. Obviously my clan would be luck clan crew or luck crew clan or Big Dad T's clan or something like that. It would be almost an advertisement for my channel for sure. So you would be part of a clan and every time that clan was online or in Dungeon Quest, you would know where they were at if they were all together. You would have clan posts, clan battles, clan raid posts in game, not on Discord, but in the game. You would have top clans. In other words, when the clan goes and does a bunch of map, their total XP is added together and there would be a clan board over here like top clans okay and the top members clan membership will probably be maxed at 50 or maybe 100 i'm not sure i would hope that it would be almost infinite like you could have a leaderboard of biggest clan and then everybody would want to join that biggest clan so if it was an infinite number so there's your family aspect so you have a clan you're part of a group you're part of a unit you belong to something and that is a human need that we all have is to belong to something so here's how you would get the pets so you would jump in a map and i would show you it would be an egg obviously that you would have to catch or hatch in a map if you're low level such as like desert easy okay if you're desert easy and you go in here you're going to get like a super basic pet its xp is going to be like super low just like yours and you got to find it now as you go to each map you can upgrade to the next evolved egg and each one of these dragons would be different so just like the easter update you would just come back here and your first egg in desert temple would be back here where we found the old egg you would come back here where this little ghost spot is and there would be an egg and you could hatch it even before you start the game now this would be great so I'd hatch it, boom, I'd go to my inventory, there would be another tab here for pets, I'd equip my pet, and then we would go start the battle. We would run down and do this dungeon, and I would start buffing the XP on my pet right away, because this is the level that I'm at. As the XP on the pet goes up, you can get through these maps quicker. So in other words, you can level up a lot faster in this game instead of taking months to get through a, a freaking map. Your pet now will help you battle. And what would be really cool is that your dragon that's sitting here beside you can't be behind you. It's got to be on the side. So your dragon on your side, you every time you swing, it shoots a little fire. Of course, the first dragon you get here in Sands wouldn't be all that powerful. Its little fire burst would probably be really tiny. Uh, it would probably only kill things that were right next to you. But as you go up through the maps, that fire expansion from the little dragon gets longer and longer, bigger and more powerful. So let's say you're in the last and final map and you've moved your way up and you go for the egg. You say, you know what? I need the orbital egg. And it's obviously going to be a dragon that's like super spacey or something. And you come over here and you go around this wall and boom you find the egg you hit hatch you equip your dragon and you start 
working on his multiplier as well. You got your legendary on and you're able to kill these guys a lot faster instead of dying like I just did. Or another concept, instead of putting a dragon in every map, they just lead this thing up. It's an Easter map. It's got eggs. Oh look, this bird just glitched. What is he doing? Bro, this bird just glitched. That's hilarious. So anyway, yeah, why not just uh, have the egg in here and you got to defeat the boss probably on easy would be the best thing see now this is every level it would make sense just to use this map instead of having to having to redo all the other maps to add the dragon eggs just put it in this one and it'd be like a normal drop like the cosmetic or the normal egg once the easter event is up because a lot of people have said they actually like playing this map i like this map myself i think it's pretty fun um i think it's pretty hilarious to even to look at and these except these birds are super annoying but that's okay you can get through it so you finish this you finish that final dragon if and let's say the luck for the egg is 25% on easy and 75% on hard and that would uh that would make sense oh my god I just got killed I mean I just think it's a really good idea probably just to use this one but they did already put all the holes the caves and all the spots in the new maps I'm not sure which would be easier keeping this one and just adding the drop or adding all the dragon eggs to all the maps it depends if they want you to grind more they would probably have this one as a luck multiplier on the boss that would make people keep playing this map to try and get the pet and then maybe you just get one pet and you just evolve them as you go up in each map so if you're already at orbital you could just uh get your pet and evolve them really quick if you're not at that level then you would get the pet here and you couldn't be able to evolve him except for the armor that you have or you're available for your level Level, which uh, seems like it would be harder so I'm not sure I'm not a developer so I'm not sure which would be easier using all the maps or using this single map right here and the question is or what you could armor your dragon with based on your level if you got the egg in this Easter map oh no hopefully we can finish it no we, we're not gonna finish this I don't think we died too many times all right we did make it to the boss of 114 but I don't expect us to actually uh, finish this at all i'm gonna see if i can just go up to him and bam let me get a few hits on him uh my cooldown is horrible this sucks i hate this boss ah i hate him i literally hate this boss one other aspect of these dragons now you have a dragon but you're not really providing for it how do you feed it well you feed it by uh fighting with it that's how it gets fed so you feed it your unicorn or your dragon through battling dungeons you kind of keep grinding dungeons in order for your dragon to get bigger third part of nurturing the providing of clothing how would we do that yes you should be able to dress your dragon so you would come to the upgrade or maybe there's actually enough room here there'll be a dragon upgrade right here you walk in the dragon upgrade circle you would come here and it would give you different armors for your dragon okay because your dragon could take damage it just like you can your dragon can get hurt so to increase the hp for your dragon you'll need to dress it with dragon armor there'll be different variations of dragon armor you'll hit your armor on your dragon and you'll upgrade its spell power or its range its physical power and its health okay just like you do your own armor so there is the clothing aspect as well so your three areas of being a provider or nurturer for your dragon is to possess the dragon as i said possession is important you could dress your dragon you could feed your dragon with fights and you could shelter your dragon with uh armor as well the providing of clothing and shelter are pretty much the ba basically the same thing they'll never be dragon huts i don't think i just don't think they have enough room in this whole lobby to do something like that i don't know if they put like a sleep requirement like you couldn't use your dragon all the time this would make it more challenging so you come over here to this uh dragon looking cave right here you come in here and you would have like a small portable kind of like a beehive simulator you just go ahead and claim one of the portables that are in here because this uh server holds 40 people so there'd be 40 portables in each game you go in you claim it and you just hit e sleep dragon and boom uh there it is 
your dragon sleeping and you can walk out and your dragon's no longer equipped i don't know if that's really necessary but it could be a good idea just for the fun of the game i don't really want the dragon to have to sleep or to rest i would think just the armor hp would be good enough for your dragon so there it is people that's how you take the concept that is winning for adopt me in roblox and you apply it to this game or any game you could go to any game and apply the same nurturing and possession concept to any game and they would all blow up just like that one at that point we would probably see so much glitching and lagging in roblox as we have before yesterday was a really sick day the game kept crashing because of dot me and because people People are saying that there was a hacker that hacked into the VC game, the voice chat game, which I don't really believe. I've seen the videos for the voice chat. They look really fake. I'm not sure if voice chat's ever gonna come, but I'm hoping so that it will. It does kind of violate the rules of Roblox. I mean, you pretty much can't say anything in a chat without getting hashtag. Why would they allow us to speak freely without any moderation? It doesn't seem like a really good idea. So I think the whole voice chat rumor, probably not true. I don't see why this game would add voice chat like Rust because the amount of uh, cursing is going to be really bad unless they got some kind of voice bot that can moderate it and bleep it out but i'm not sure if that technology actually exists yet also it would be like the biggest scam ever for voice chat by the way they're saying it's pre-recorded and then you just play it over and over while you're in voice chat i mean people are just going to pre-record roblox.com free robux go to this website kind of voice things and that's all you're going to hear in voice chat i mean obviously it's going to be super annoying i mean i'm just going to record my voice saying sub the big daddy t over and over and over and keep playing it that's what i'm going to do if it is real so i don't think voice chat is real i don't think it's coming to this game be careful what you watch because a lot of these could have been faked videos thank you for watching Make sure you leave a like. Let me know what you think of this concept in Dungeon Quest. And I will see you on the next video. And remember, people, stay lucky.